going on? Hello. Hello, Zan. How are you? I'm really good. A bit hot and sweaty. Um, yep. I'm, I'm in Brisbane. I'm, it's, it's really starting to warm up now. Still don't know how to dress properly. A um, lot of chafing. There's an air of trepidation in your voice. Yeah, there's a lot of chafing. <laughs> And the boot, look, I've got to say, on holidays, boobs are fine, but li- when you live it 24-7 and they, you have to wear a heavy bra in this weather, it's not fun. It's just not have fun. You, have you been putting the roll-on on? No, I stopped with that. It's just, I'm just, I'm just letting it all out now. Yeah. But, but I do genuinely think, gosh, if I didn't have to wear a bra, things wouldn't be so bad and I wouldn't be so hot. <laughs> but I do. You're entering that era of your life, though, aren't you? I know. You're, you're going deep into the CBF years. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll be like that lady I saw a fair few years ago at the airport. I remember she'd just come back from Fiji or something and she was wearing a muumuu. And you know how muumuus are, like, really got huge arms, mm. like holes in the arms because they just, they're like a wing, like a bat wing. Yes. Um, and I saw her, she was picking up her luggage off the travel later or whatever you call it at the airport. As she leant down to pick up her bag, I realised she had no bra on under there. They were all out for everybody to see and because you could see right into her shirt. And I feel like I'm about six months away from that pretty much. I'm ready. I'm ready. How are you going? If you can hear something in the background, the fire alarm just started going off in the studio. So just um, that's uh, everything's fine. My phone isn't ringing. It's it's just, it sounds test. like a deep vibration, but who, no, it's who fine. the hell knows? It's just like a little boop. Who the hell knows? Cute. It's like a meditation. It feels very end of the year vibes at the moment, not just because the temperature is rising, Miff, but also, I don't know about you, but there's a lot of events on. And I love events. I love end of year catch-ups. I love Christmas parties. I'm a little bit bushed. I had our Christmas party um, in Melbourne last week. How was it? It looked good on the socials. <laughs> looked like fun. What song did you sing at karaoke? <laughs> it did end in karaoke, I'll tell you that. Maybe some people saw it on the socials. Um, I sang A Whole New World from Aladdin, which is my karaoke go-to. I'll tell you this, though. I sang it a cappella because Al, who organised the karaoke, went and switched off the one switch in the room that says, do not touch this, oh, no. and he killed the whole karaoke machine, and I... it took them about 20 minutes to reset it. So we just started singing anyway because we love were quite load, loaded went... from the party. <laughs> yeah, I love that you just went, oh, well, let's keep going. I got this. I got this. That's great. Word perfect. Um, but doing a karaoke Christmas party um, kick on vibe with people who actually sing, whose job mm. it is to perform music, is a whole other level. I speak specifically of Henry Waggins, yeah. who performed Natalie and Brulee is Torn Amazing. in one of the most beautiful ways I've ever seen. And it gets better. The next day I was checking the socials and good old Nats shared it. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. To her 700,000 Instagram <laughs> followers. That's amazing. Yeah, it was very cute. Very, very cute. Uh, so it was fun. I, I was hope very, Henry um, Wagon's got some new fans out of that. I hope so too. If you yeah. don't know Henry, amazing singer, beautiful crooner, beautiful man. Beautiful um, baritone was, voice. Beautiful baritone voice. Does torn quite well. Mm. Um, but I felt a bit ratchet the next day and I had to kind of um, back it up. Not had to, but did back it up with seeing... Christina Aguilera at Flemington <gasps> Race Did you go and see Scraggles? <laughs> I'm sorry, why is she Scraggles? Scraggulera. Don't you remember? <laughs> she was awesome. We used to call her Scraggulera. Did you not? Oh, oh. Did we? Because Scrag, obviously, it's like mole or, you know, it's a term of endearment. Yeah. And so we used to call her Scraggulera. I, I, or we, as in I, I thought other people did too. I Tell me that. I'm not alone. Tell me I'm not I, alone. Well, maybe Bang Fam can hit us up in the bang box as you always do. I, I haven't even thought about the word scrag in so long. Scrag's a great word. Um, so good. <laughs> bring it back. Bring back scrag. You were saying, as we talked about last week, game on moles. I don't know if we said that in the podcast or not. Probably not. But I saw that when you were um, posting about Spicks and Specs coming mm. back, you said game on moles, which I always love that about you. But scrag. Scrag. <laughs> yes, yeah, scrag. It's a good word. It's a very good word. God, this bloody thing is, can you hear it whooping yeah, and hollering? It's, it's, like <laughs> it's great. Anyway, Bang On is your place for music, art, life and stuff and whatever the heck we want to talk about. Um, we are getting near the end of the year as well in Bang On. We're going to wrap up for 2023 pretty soon, take a little summer break. And Miff, yeah. our final episode, our big last episode, is going to be a massive bang back. Yay, which our is... favourite time of the year. It's oh, the my gift. God. That keeps on giving. It's it's basically the recommends from all the Bang Fam for what we can watch or look at or listen to or read over the summer break. It's perfect. Yeah. 
yeah, this is our gift to you, our little recommendations, but it's also all from the Bang Fam, who I know you are aligned with culturally, spiritually, physically, mm. in every sense of the word. So we want you to bang on about something yourself for our final episode. It could be a TV show, it could be a movie, a book, a long read, maybe it's a podcast, maybe you're getting really into a philosophical movement, maybe you've joined a cult. Uh, whatever it is, um, hit us up <laughs> in the bang box. The email address is in the show notes. You can also contact us directly. There's a little button if you're listening in the ABC Listen app to contact us. And yeah, this will be our big last episode. So we'd love to hear from you. Get your bang backs in post haste. Um, in all those ways, and we'll bang back with you in a couple of weeks' time. Hey, what are you wearing today? Uh, I've got uh, my Oz Music Day T-shirt on, which is beautiful. I love it, actually. I'm wearing a scientist's T-shirt. Yes, classic. Yes, classic Australian band, uh, one of the original punk rock bands that came out of Western Australia, fronted by Kim Salmon, and they're back on tour. They've been touring England and Europe and all that. So it's all back. So I thought, figure I'll pull that one out of the cupboard. And wear that one today. What have you got on? I'm wearing my RVG oh. Brain Worms T-shirt. Um, you can see there's a beautiful long fingernailed hand picking out the brain worms from <laughs> Romy Vega's head, which is absolutely my vibe. Also in a soft pale pink, which I love for such oh. an extreme image. But, yeah, Oz Music T-shirt day is happening as we record. If you don't know what it is, it's a great chance for you to literally wear your love of Australian music on your sleeve and in the last few years, it's become also a fundraiser, not just to support artists through buying merch, buying a new T-shirt, but also to uh, donate to Support Act, who you would have done stuff with Support Act over the years, right, Miff? It's an amazing organisation. It is they an do- amazing organisation. They, they basically have set up a system whereby they can take care of uh, not just the musicians who are involved in this thing that we call the music business, but also the crew and the people who work sort of on the out the back of the performance at the front. And it's providing all sorts of things like financial support, health care, mental health care, uh, loads of different ways of supporting everybody because like many of these are unregulated industries that have kind of cobbled together an existence, I guess, without too many laws in place. There's not a lot of support and there's certainly not a support network for a lot of the people, a lot of the crew that help put on the shows that we love and help make the recordings that we love. So I think, yeah, they, they've, they came at a really important time and they've done amazing work. So if you can support them, do it. Yeah, absolutely. We'll put a link to where you can donate if you've got any extra cash, as you said, for all the people who are behind the scenes as well. And they really do do amazing work. So shout outs to Support Act. Shout outs to all Australian musicians who are putting out great merch and giving us so many good things to wear. Speaking of fashion. Well, I know everybody's off eating turkey and dressing. And I know you ain't working today. But I bet we got a lot of nine to fivers out there. Am I right? I wrote a song for you. You're going to help me out? Let's go. Well, I took her out of bed and I stumbled to the kitchen. Pour myself a cup of ambition. Yawn and stretch and try to come to life. What a line. Pour myself a cup of ambition. The one and only Dolly Parton. Did you see her incredible performance at the halftime Thanksgiving football game with the Dallas Cowboys in the last week? Incredible. I must admit I didn't watch it all, but I certainly did see all the photographs of what she was wearing. She was dressed as a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader and she looked freaking amazing. How old is she now? 77. 77. Absolutely incredible. She had tiny white shorts on a little kind of bustier. I mean, she was covered in skin stockings, which hold you in like no tomorrow. So they're really, it was, she was basically just wearing an outfit, but it looked like she skin was. Skin stockings is such a cooked term. I know, isn't it? <laughs> but it looked like she was, she was wearing the cheerleader's outfit and she looked freaking magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. So beautiful, so wonderful, such a queen, such an icon. Um, Of course, a couple of people took, I'm going to say mainly one guy, and it is a guy, a dude, um, took uh, (laughs) took it the wrong way. It wasn't wasn't keen on it. It sort of went a little bit viral for questioning the quote-unquote appropriateness of a 77-year-old woman dressing up in a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader's outfit. Now, before we get into and I won't, I'm not going to link to his tweet or anything, but this is what I always do, and you and I reckon you, I hope you would do the same myth. Every now and then you and I get some shitty tweets, right? I mm. always go to their account and have a look at what else they've been sharing. And then I just go, oh, okay, that's the context. That's yeah. fine. That's this person. And there's and zero friends. There's <laughs> always zero friends. Or I think it's just. Or three. 
before like elevating someone, responding to them, retweeting, just take a look at what else they're tweeting before you think about that because it's like, yeah, they're, they're, they're always going to be in that sort of corner of the room. Anyway, this is his, um, his vibe. He's been going on off, off on one over the last week about Irish Lives Matter. Um, of course, Black Lives Matter is a, something that's, you know, been championed and talked about protest movements over many, many years. Irish Lives Matter is what he says to that. He's been ripping into a lot of trans politics as well. And he also posted a pic of a white kid in a traditional American Indian headdress with Hero as he retweeted it. So that's a little snapshot of our mate who says that Dolly Parton is inappropriate for wearing a cheerleader's outfit I mean, at the age of his, 77. His words were, nobody <laughs> wants to see a 95-year-old gran- granny dressed like that, even if you're worth $650 million. That's him. <sighs> what an art. Like, he's just an asshole. But you sent me Chelsea Handler's response. Should we take a listen? Yes. Listen up, you fucking wingnut. <laughs> Dolly Parton is an American treasure, and the fact that she is on that stage at all is a gift. Here are just a few things that she has done in her life without having children. She funded COVID research that saved countless lives. She invested royalties from Whitney Houston's version of I Will Always Love You into black communities in Nashville. And as a woman that plans on being proudly tits out well into my 90s, I have one message, okay? We are only getting older and hotter, so fucking deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. That's one of the that's one of the best rants I've seen this year, I think. And it came Just from such it. an honest place too. Also tits out. I feel like it's a real tits out episode of Bang oh, On. Absolutely. Week. We're um, in our tits out era in every sense of the word. No matter how pert as they are with Dolly Parton or loose as they are with us, yep. we are tits out all the way as we get older and the CBF energy is real. A lot of great comments around this in response. If I look good as Dolly Parton does when I'm 77, then I'm wearing this outfit to the fucking grocery store is one. (laughs) Dolly Parton could murder three people in front of me and I wouldn't care. (laughs) And her, her sister, little sister Stella, said, I personally thought my big sister Dolly was cute as hell in her Dallas Cowboys cheerleading costume. To those of you being critical of a 77-year-old kicking up her heels, I say, fuck yourself. Shame on you, not her. A lot of fucks being said. <laughs> a lot of women being really angry. Like, don't fuck with Dolly. And and I think Chelsea actually went in to say that. There's two people you cannot fuck with, and that is Dolly Parton and Willie Nelson. There was also another weird link with Dolly, and I feel like it um, deserves a little bit of this. Never thought Keanu Reeves would be in our Fahajan segment, aside from that full-length trench trench that he wore in The Matrix, which is now mm. back in Fahajan. Mm. I don't know if anyone's noticed, but if you're wearing that, finger on the pulse. Um, <laughs> but I also didn't realise Dolly Parton had a connection with Keanu Reeves. Apparently, Keanu's mum designed Dolly Parton's 1978 Playboy outfit. <gasps> Can you believe that? How does that even happen and how do we only find out about, out about this in 2023? I don't know. And how do all these people know each other before they get famous? I mean, Dolly was obviously famous, but do you think having Dolly in the house set Keanu on his journey? Yes. You, like, I, I feel like if you're in the orbit of Dolly, you, you, you're going to go off and do great things and I, I, perhaps that's what happens. Perhaps we can actually, given Dolly does so many amazing things and also Keanu, continually proves he is one of the most decent human beings on the planet, Mm. perhaps that is because of Dolly. Everything comes back to Dolly. (laughs) It's not six degrees of separation from Keanu. It's actually Dolly. It's Dolly. (laughs) She's the beginning of all good things. That should just be the answer to everything. Anything good that happens in the world, it's Dolly. Yeah. It's absolutely Dolly. (laughs) So she apparently met Reeves as a child when he would accompany his mum on assignments. And uh, she did a lot of sewing for Dolly, she said. She she did a lot of my clothes. Oh and my when God. he was little, she'd bring him over to my house when we were fitting or when I would go to the shop where she worked. And um, she didn't say much else about Keanu, but it, I, I imagine she's just probably just spreading her gold dust on him. Absolutely. The, so she's, it would have been Ms Reeves, Keanu's mum, would have been a seamstress or something or a fashion designer. I think so. And she's gotten in. I love this. I love this little tidbit. So, so good. Dolly, you are our queen. It's Dolly is the response to all good things in the world. Keep on doing what you're doing and fuck anyone who says that you shouldn't. <laughs> Speaking of words, of which there have been lots of dirty ones, word of the year came through this week, Miff. Are you excited? It's one of our favourite times of the year. I don't know if excited is the answer, (laughs) to be honest. I loved 
this. I love this time and I love anticipating what it might be, but whew, I don't know. Shall we, shall, which one do we go with first? Let's go with the Australian one because usually it's the Australian dictionary, which is Macquarie, mm. the American, which is Merriam-Webster, and the Oxford English Dictionary, which is the UK Dictionary. Um, I'm sure there's other dictionaries in the world. These are just the ones that we, as a Western nation, are fed the stories about. But let's kick off locally. What was the Macquarie Dictionary's word of the year? Okay, it's two words, first and foremost, and this is always an issue with everybody, but, you know, we're, 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 <laughs> o- we're over that now. But it's also a term that I don't think I've ever heard of before nor used. Cosy Lives. Cosy yeah, Lives, Cozy which lives. is a lighthearted term for the cost of living crisis. Cosy Lives. Whoever said that ever in a sentence ever? I say it every day. Do you? Yeah. Who else says it? I've never heard anyone say it. <laughs> Not in my life. Liza, our bang babe, is just shaking her head going, I don't know what you're talking about, Sam. <laughs> never heard a person because it's, well, what it is is it's like platy jubes, which was the platinum jubilee celebration for the Queen. So it's a, it's actually an English term. It's not it's not ours. We, that It began in the UK. So I don't even know if, I, I never heard anyone use it. I mean, I'm not in an office most days. That may be why, but I don't think anyone's ever dropped a cosy lives in a sentence <laughs> in my life around me. Have they, and you use, do you genuinely use it? I genuinely do. Um, it's like everything, you know, a crushing economic situation, make it cute. A pandemic, Panny D, make it cute. This is what we do in Australia. We, you know, we slang every, everything up. We shorten everything and we make it kind of cute and fluffy. But it is like a moment of, you know, in history, if you think about what's happening, not just in Australia, but in economies, uh, and again, Western economies, particularly all over the world, that people are really feeling the pinch. And I reckon this is good. You know what? So I'll take it one step further. <laughs> My brother, because he's this kind of guy, um, got the domain name Cosy Lives. And no way. Bought, <laughs> okay, so this like, is why you the, yes. When did he do that? Did he do it like before months it was ago. announced? Right, okay, so, <laughs> all right. So, what, like, I've never heard, never, Cosy Lives. So he knew. It must have been. I want to work out what worlds. Bang fam, let me know. What worlds is this? was this ever being said? Is Cosy Lives. Yeah. There is a few other things that made the runners up, and these are worth uh, mentioning because, again, things that I hadn't even thought about. Algo speak. A L G O speak. What is that? I mean? love spelling things. Algorithm it's a na- speak. Sort of. It's a noun that defines a form of coded language used on digital platforms to replace words relating to things such as sex or violence oh, okay. that would trigger a site's moderation rules to remove a post. So words like sex are replaced by innocuous words that sound similar, like segs, yes. S-E-double-G-S, <laughs> eggs with an S in the front of them. Algo speak, I hadn't heard about this one, and I do like this one um, as well, and I think this very much relates to the economies of the time. Skimflation, mm. which describes... Again, never re- heard it before. I'd never heard skimflation. What is going I- on? How am I, Like, I do a podcast about culture every week and I've never heard any of these words. <laughs> See, this is why we're here to inform people. We learn, you learn. That's why we're a service to the Bang Fam. It's about describing a reduction in the quality or quantity of a produce or service while the price remains the same. And that one came second. And I will say this. I've been talking for many years about how Vitaweets used to be full to the brim Tight as, you could barely open the packet because it was packed so full Mm -hmm. and now there is a significant gap at the top and they would probably say, oh, so you can open the packet easily. I say, skimflation. (laughs) There's at least four to six less biscuits in each Vitaweets packet. And you know Don't even get me started on bags of crisps and all the air that's in there. Skimflation, Mick. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about barbecue shapes and the lack of topping on those those little fuckers. Like, (laughs) there's never enough. You get a bad batch more often than you get a good batch. That's That's skimflation. Scrotox, which is Botox for men's genitalia. Well, there's probably a reason why I don't know that one too. Why would you get Botox on your ghoulies? Like, I don't know because it certainly medical it or wouldn't, com- cosmetic. It wouldn't. It'd be cosmetic, surely. It wouldn't lift them. I mean, you can't. You can't stop a weight sagging. You know, like you just can't. We know. Yeah, we know. <laughs> so I'm not sure. I'm not sure what Scrotox does. Does it just tighten the skin, maybe around the? Around the testicle. I got one more for you before we move into the United States word of the year. Have you got skills in Riz? Do you know what Riz is? No. (laughs) (laughs) What's Riz? Riz is describing a person's skill to woo another person. She's got the Riz. Oh, sounds like a disease, doesn't it? (laughs)
<laughs> She's got the riz. Merriam-Webster, which is the US dictionary, their word of the year is, wait for it, authentic. I fell asleep. <laughs> like, that, that's been around a long time. I thought the point was to add a new word or term. It is often a new word, but it's not always that. But you know what? If you think about what has been dominating the discourse and particularly in pop culture, all of the stuff around AI, celebrity culture, Mm. identity, social media, authenticity is the centre of all that and our questioning of what is authentic, what should be authentic, how we figure out what's authentic when we're looking at it, when we're increasingly just seeing these made-up images of people, video and and, and still images alike, Mm. and that's why it's climbed to the top. Um, And it can mean a lot of different things. So I reckon authentic is kind of capturing the mood of the moment. Yeah, it is the moment. It is the zeitgeist. But the problem with when when these things become, you know, so much a... I guess a talking point, authenticity, that's when authenticity, you know, artists are praised for being authentic. But, you know, we talk about authenticity, but in, in actual fact, they often use it as a as a way to sell more. And it's probably so far from authentic, but we don't know. Post-authentic. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I, yeah, once this becomes something that people hang their hat on, authenticity, I think then it becomes something that could be it's not just about AI, it's just about what sells. And yeah. and that, that bothers me a little bit. All of this to say, though, the discussion around what the word of the year is and everything in between is that, you know, language has power, right? I was talking Ooh. about a few months ago, Pip Williams' brilliant book, The Dictionary of Lost Words, which was all about who gets to choose what words make it into the dictionary. Yeah. And very, in, very specifically through a feminist gaze of why these words are considered worthwhile, why, why women's stories are not considered worthwhile and how long that had been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. So this stuff I've always find really fascinating. We laugh about it, but also... Language has huge power. And I'm very keen to see what the Oxford Dictionary's word of the year is because that's going to be coming our way in the next week or so. Let me remind you that last year their word of the year, two words, was goblin mode, which we both fully embraced last year in our full CBF energy of post Panny D life. Very big news this week coming through that one of the greatest mockumentaries and rock and roll stories of all time, This Is Spinal Tap, is getting a sequel 40 years after it first came into our lives, Miv. I did not see this coming. 1984 was when this one came out and it was groundbreaking given it was that first style of of mockumentary slash document. I mean, it, it is a documentary really about rock and roll stars, I think, even though it's been done by actors. It just feels so real and so funny and so good. This is Spinal Tap. It was directed by Rob Reiner, Christopher Guest, one of the most amazing comedic actors of all time, Michael McKean from Better Call Saul and Harry Shearer as the musicians in This Is Spinal Tap and it's just become the stuff of folklore now. Everybody knows exactly what's going on when you say things like, oh, turn it up to 11, you know, like it's it's just absolutely beautiful. It's it's in our DNA and I can't believe they're doing a remake and I am, I could not be more excited given the fact that it'll be just, I'm sure, as scathing on ageing rock stars <laughs> or wannabe rock stars as the original documentary was. Yeah, Scathing in a like, loving way, of course. Well, yeah, because all the original cast members, I think, are going to be in there, as well as Paul McCartney and Sir Elton John as well. Garth Brooks too. I love that Garth Brooks is going to pop up. Exactly. What's what? A, well, what else is Garth Brooks doing really? <laughs> Not much. I don't. Garth think. Brooks actually does quite well. I think he's just <laughs> sitting on his piles of millions. <laughs> Somewhere in Nashville or something like that. Do you remember when Garth Brooks had an alter ego too? Yes. Um, oh, oh, my God, God was it was it? amazing. What was it, Garth Brooks' Garth alter Brooks. ego? Um, um, it was like his rock and roll yeah, uh, alter he, ego. And he did, like, stuff without telling. Chris Gaines. Chris Gaines! And, oh, my God, and he's got a soul patch. Like, go and just for a little <laughs> bit of joy, go and look up Chris Gaines. It's his rock alter ego and the hairstyle was phenomenal. Brush forward, soul patch. Yes. Could do whatever the hell he wants, Garth Brooks. Really? This wasn't meant to land in March 2024, but obviously they're only starting filming it. This is why it came out in February. I wonder if it was delayed by all the strikes and because they wanted to time it with the mm. 
40th anniversary, but it might have been one of those ones that fell into the cracks being delayed by the strikes. Mm. Um, so who knows when it's going to be out. I, lo- I love a good sequel. And again, this is um, this taps into that, you know, l- this drive towards nostalgia that everyone's been going for. No new ideas, <laughs> just going back into the shit that we know. <laughs> and on that note, let's listen to some of the highlights of This Is Spinal Tap. The review you had on Shark Sandwich, which was merely a two-word review, just said... Shit sandwich. Hey, but it's, 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 it's still a stupid It's such a fine line between stupid and, and clever. Yeah, it's just a little turnabout. Yeah. Yeah. Rock and roll! One loud. Why don't you just make ten louder and make ten be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to eleven. <laughs> turn it up to eleven. I love it. If you've never seen This Is Spinal Tap, oh. change that this weekend. So it's good. So Fran Drescher's good. in it too. Oh, my God, and As she's the amazing in it. She's amazing. Can we just say she looks pretty much the same as yeah. she did in 1984? <laughs> what an absolute icon. I saw that you liked this on socials this week, Miff, so I knew that it would be something you wanted to talk about. Linda Evangelista doesn't want to date slash ever hear someone breathing. This mm. is what she revealed. Linda in a- Evangelista is all of us. Um, <laughs> she's single and that's how she likes it. And she said she doesn't want to get in a relationship for these reasons. These were her words. I don't want to sleep with anybody anymore, she told the Times. I don't want to hear somebody breathing. <laughs> yes. It's fair. Absolutely. That's a, that's a good enough reason for me. I wear earplugs. <laughs> I go to sleep. <laughs> I used to get those, like, disposable ones, but I invested in some $40 high-grade earplugs oh because God. as you get older, the sounds get louder. They do. And, <laughs> and this... that's long-term relationships, baby. That is love. <laughs> Earplugs. Uh, it's interesting. I, I read something on somewhere on the social medias this week. Someone made a comment, oh, when, when your dog or your cat snores, we think it's just absolutely beautiful. But if your partner snores, that's it. It's over. Like you got just, the ick. You just can't. You've got the ick. I fully sent that to my partner. <laughs> God, our algorithms are so in line this week. They are. We are the same. Algorithms are bang fam. That's right. Did you also see the story about the prodigy whose lyrics to a certain song I've always had a huge problem with? In fact, I'll say this. I'll never play this on the radio um, if I'm in charge of the desk. Smack My Bitch Up, Ooh. which was released 26 years ago. And which still to this day when people request it, I'm like, really? I think people don't think of what it is. It's so ingrained. And, and I was thinking about this. Like when that song comes on, it's that, da, 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 da. like I think it's so ingrained and... And people at the time didn't think it was a problematic thing, if I remember correctly. It was perfectly no. normalised. For a long time afterwards, I so, reckon. So too. I still think because people haven't really thought about it, they'd be hearing it, they'd be hearing the sound and not thinking about what the words are. And those words are awful. Yeah, it's fully awful. Well, mm. they've been dropping those words. They haven't actually commented on this publicly, but it seems that over a couple of nights, you know, just last weekend, they were performing at the beautiful Alexandra Palace in London and fan shot footage so shows the vocalist Maxim, who has taken on the frontman duties after the death of Keith Flint. He is taken away that titular lyric, and instead he's saying, change my pitch up. So that's what they've swapped in. They haven't commented on the change of the lyric. They've just kind of done it. But change my pitch up is now what's taking place instead of smack my bitch up. So I guess they're kind of, you know, redesigning their song for 2023. Long overdue. Mm, absolutely. And all the, you know, 40 to 50 something people out for the night, for probably one night out for the year going to see the prodigy and relive some memories, probably won't even notice. Well, that's interesting that you say that because similarly to when I saw Jamiroquai a few weeks ago at Harvest Rock, it was an amazing set and just brilliant almost two hours of performance. But when JK came out at the start in his, like, little chavvy, you know, matching tracksuit, he was wearing the American Indian headdress. Yeah. And I was, and all he was knows just better. like, like he, it's weird. And yeah. I'm like, why? Like, what do you think that in Australia everyone's fine with this? Maybe some people are. I don't know. It's just he does know better. I found it so jarring. And for quite a while I was like, oh, why did you have to do that? Like, there's a choice. You did, you you had the fuzzy hat and then you had the kind of metallic things, but you've literally worn something with, with feathers. It's strange. Yeah. He could have made something different too. Like that, that, you know, it wasn't that, but chose not to. Yeah. That's a statement. Yeah. Very weird.
Speaking of great music stories, this weekend Beyonce's Renaissance film comes out. She released the third and final trailer from it. I got teary listening to this. I think about all of my heroes and all that they endured. I know that all of my struggle and sacrifice is opening the door for the next. They are the new beginning. I want to house you and make it take my name. I have nothing to prove to anyone at this point. We are creating our own world. Opens this weekend everywhere. Renaissance the film, not just a concert capture, but also behind the scenes doco. I am so keen for this film. If are you so, going to go so and excited. see it? Oh, hell yeah. yeah. I haven't sorted my tickets yet, but I want to go in a big cinema with some mates and cry my eyes out. I'm so excited. <laughs> Will you go see it? Yeah, absolutely. Not sure I'll be able to this weekend, but I'll definitely see it. Yeah, it's just like seeing her capture this moment and also in that trailer she sort of talked about, you know, her children and how they really make her realise the passing of time. Regardless of whether you have kids or not, I feel like the passing of time is something that we all feel as we get older, but also particularly post Panny D, Mm. how do we spend our time? And I love that she's just created this insanely monstrous, amazing, inspirational renaissance show and that's what she's putting out into the world. She doesn't have to do any of that, but she just put all of this work into this incredible show, um, charged a pretty penny for it, very happy to pay it. When you see the show, you're just like, whoa, this is Mm. insane. But I love that that's what the art she's creating. She doesn't have to, as she say, prove herself to anyone anymore, but this is what the legacy wants wants to leave. Um, And I'm very, very excited for it. Cannot wait for that. Hey, speaking of live performances. We might have some special news for Bang Fam this weekend. Might. We do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> what can we say? Well, not much, but you need to be aware of what's going on on your socials tomorrow if you're listening to this on a Thursday. Yeah. Follow Miff and I. We will reveal all on Friday. We've got some very exciting news. And watch this space. What are you banging on about this week? Oh, God, that was so cryptic. Can we give any more details? <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you're in South Australia or intend to be in South Australia, listen up. Mm. I don't know. That's a very specific clue. Mm. <laughs> mm. Would like to go to South Australia at some point next year, maybe? <laughs> in February, maybe? Yeah, maybe. That's cool. <laughs> right, we'll leave it at that. That's good. What are you bonging on about this week? Uh, bonging on about? Bonging on about. Um, <laughs> boinging out about? I am currently watching a beautiful docker. There's only one episode up on SBS On Demand at the moment, but the second one will be up when the next episode airs. But it was fantastic. It was on the telly the other night. Stock Aitken and Waterman doco, which is absolutely brilliant. It's uh, the story of Stock Aitken and Waterman and they are, of course, a, a production trio from the UK in the 80s who really capitalised on that that idea of high energy dance music and utilising, I guess, a, a, a system like Motown, you know, creating a studio where artists, up and coming artists would come through them. They were a pop factory, a UK pop factory from the 80s. They built it from the ground up um, and they had over 100 UK top 40 hits, which is Absolutely astounding. But at the time, they were loved by teenagers, obviously, and they produced the likes of Mel and Kim, um, Divine's song, You Think You're a Man. We had Pete Burns, You Spin Me Round, Bananarama, Rick Astley, Jason and Kylie, all of those artists that came through them. Loved by teenagers, but by the music establishment at the time, absolutely derided, uh, criticised, mm. and were never given, I guess, the, the, the credit that they were due for writing Unbelievable pop songs. Again, it's that whole idea of of, of pop being just so disposable that we don't have to look into its the merits of it and the skill that it takes to create music like that. And I think as we reassess all of those archaic views on what pop music is and we change our minds, we look back at this stuff and go, oh, hang on a minute, it was phenomenal. They were phenomenal. And so I'm looking forward to the next episode. I think it's going to be more about the the downfall perhaps because it got so, so big and then obviously things changed. So I, I, I recommend watch the first one before the second one drops. It'll probably be, when was it on? Tuesday, I think Tuesday or maybe Wednesday. What was the, Who knows? What was the title of it? Oh, it's just called Straight Up Legends of Pop.
That sounds amazing. That's like my childhood. That's our coming of age, all of those songs, isn't it? Totally. Day, 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 day. So good. Love that. No, Thank you for that tip. No worries. Now, what are you banging on about? I'm banging on about the Great British Bake Off. Um, <laughs> Someone's had a big week. <laughs> we love these weeks. Couldn't Hang watch on, any... I reckon that's a good bang. It is a good bang, but you know, you couldn't, you didn't want to watch anything that was going to really hurt your brain. Oh my god, I need some. And healing. I love that. Like that's this... fine. This is what bang on's about. We don't have to do, you know, high cultural moments all the time. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay to slide into a bit of Great British Bake Off every now and then. It's one of the most wholesome TV shows I've ever seen. I'm, I'm going to say out loud that I only got onto GBBO recently. I only started watching it in the last couple of seasons. I know some people have been watching it the whole 14 seasons it's mm. been running. This is a new season featuring a new judge, Alison Hammond, who I love is her. kind of a... Oh, she's so good. She's so, so good. She's just full of life and energy. I love her. She used to be, I think, on Big Brother and done a bunch of other reality. I think she does a breakfast show, like a morning show on TV as well. Um, incredible. But, yeah, it's got Noel Fielding in it and, of course, Prue and Paul Hollywood as the as the big sort of, you know, baking judges as well. And it's been delayed. I actually have been tweeting at Binge going, when are you going to get Bake Off on? Because <laughs> um, don't Google Great British Bake Off because the last episode, the finale, just went to air in the UK in the last week. So do not Google it because I did that to try and find something and I saw a picture of the finalists and I was like, no, no. Because Binge, in all their wisdom in this 2023 world, have delayed it and they've only just started running it. The first few episodes are up. I already love Saku, Rowan, Dan and Tasha, but I love them all. It's just so freaking wholesome and a beautiful show that is what it is and is just in a world where there is a lot of darkness and cynicism and anger and hurt, Great British Bake Off is the perfect salve. And there are some great double entendres about beavers in the first episode as well. Yeah, good to so- know. <laughs> So highly recommend if you've never gotten on board and you need a little bit of a hug um, now or any time, Great British Bake Off is there for you. And you can watch the old seasons as well. They're just like, it's just such beautiful television. I love it to bits. Yay. All right. Well, next week we're going to be doing a big year in review, aren't we, Mifanwe? Yes. That is also one of my favourite times of the year where we look back <laughs> look back on some of the highlights, which usually translates to low lights of the year, <laughs> and uh, a nice little summary. So when you hit your Christmas parties... You can, you'll have all the topics ready to go. We're there for for the small talk that you need over the next four weeks. Also just me throughout that episode going, fuck, did that happen in 2023? Did that really happen in the last year? So looking forward to that. Big year in review with the Bang Fam and, of course, banging back the week after. I'll see you for both of them. Can't wait. Very excited. See you next week. Bye. Bang. Hang on.